Middle School Drama Club and Pit Production of Guys and Dolls Jr. At this time, we ask you to please turn off all cell phones and take note of emergency exit locations. The Santa Marichas Drama Club is selling concessions in the main lobby. During tonight's production, we ask you to please refrain from flash photography. Now, without further ado, please enjoy Guys and Dolls Jr.
and sisters, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is what the Bible tells us. <laughs> Hear me, you gamblers, with your dice, your cards, your horses. Just around the corner is our little mission, where you're always welcome to seek refuge from this jungle of sin. Join me, brothers and sisters, in resisting the devil, and we can put the devil... Remember, friends, the Save a Soul mission located at 409 West 49th Street is open all day and all night. Oh, never mind. Miss Sarah, I wonder what a refined dolly crew is doing mixed up in the mission dodge. Too bad, just always all her time being good. How could she make any money from that? Maybe she wants a piece of the mission. Yeah. Hey, Betty South Street. Harry the horse, how are you? You know Nicely Nicely Johnson. Yeah, how goes it? Nicely Nicely, thank you. So, tell me, what about this Nathan Detroit? Has he got a place for his craft game? He's still looking for a place. He is on. Well, tell him, I'm loaded and looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? Where did you acquire it? I collected the reward of my father. Everybody's looking for action. I hope Nathan finds out. Why, Lieutenant Brannigan, Mr. South Street, is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure. Either of you guys see Nathan Detroit. Which Nathan Detroit is that? I mean the Nathan Detroit who's been running floating crap game around here. You can tell him for me. I bet right now he's running around trying to find a spot. Hi, Nathan. Phil, I'm having terrible trouble on account of that lousy Brannigan, and I can't... Something wrong, Mr. Detroit? Oh, there are other lousy Brannigans. Detroit, I imagine you were having some trouble finding a place for your crap game. Well, the heat is on, as you must know, by the fact that you have to live off your salary. Did you find a place for the game? Not yet. I was just over the Billboard garage. Joey says he might lend to me for a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide for the day. And you know what today is? It's my and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. We've been engaged 14 years. Nathan, concentrate on game. This town's up to here with high players. The Greeks in town. Brandy Bottle Bates. Granton Slim. I know, I can make a fortune. But where can I have the game? The Billmore Garage wants a grand. We have a grand on hand. They now have a lock on the door of the gym at Public School 84. There's a stalker room behind the closet. Sky Masterson. Sky Masterson? Now there's the highest player of them all. Maybe you can borrow the thousand from Sky. That Sky, maybe that kind of money ain't lending money. It's betting money. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? I'm not scared. I'm perfectly willing to make a bet as long as I know that I'll win. Hey, look. Run your Mindy's and 
and figure out what he sold more of yesterday. The cheesecake or the strudel? How much cheesecake and how much strudel? What do you want to know for? Just figure it out. Now scram. Adela's coming. And if she sees I'm running drive she will never set foot on me again. Hello, Nathan, dear. Adelaide Pigeon. You go ahead, girls. On me and tuna fish and rye with the chocolate sundae, tomato ketchup, and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We got to get back to the hot box. Is she rehearsing? Yeah, that's like John Charlie. He's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I got to get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't want to eat. You just want to sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. And what'd you say to him? I told him, I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Nathan, happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. A bell. Read the card. Sugar sweet and so is jelly. So put this belt around in your belly. Adelie, that's so sweet. Look, a bad present. I didn't get you one. I'm sorry. No, I kind of like it when you forget to get me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. Well, don't worry. One day we'll be in the money and we'll have more mink than a mink. Nathan, I can do without anything just as long as you don't start running that craft game again. The craft game? Why would you think such a thing? Yesterday, Mindy stole 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great! Nathan, what is this? Well, I'm expecting a fellow, and I know you're hungry. Are you trying to get rid of me? No, I just don't want your sandwich getting soggy. Fellas? Nathan, you old promoter, you. Why, how's it going, Scott? Going to be in town long? Flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes. There's a lot of action down there. Want to come with me? I'm busy, but hey, mom will run to Mindy's and grab some cheesecake or something. No, I think I'll take the late results. But you will admit, Mindy has the best cheesecake in the country. Yes, I'm quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Who ain't? And yet some people like his strudel. Offhand, what do you think he sells more, the cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I've never given it much thought, but if everyone is like I am, I say Mindy sells more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? Huh? Are you willing to bet a thousand bucks that Minnie sells more cheesecake than strudel? Nathan, let me tell you a little story. Ugh. When I was a young man about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. Son, my father says, one of these days in your travels, a man is going to come up to you with a brand new deck of cards and bet that he can make the Jack of Spades up out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you are standing there, you're going to end up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I do not claim you've been clocking Mindy's cheesecake. You don't know However, that. I will bet the same thousand you don't know what color necktie you have on. No bet. Blue? What a crazy color. We took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she, has for, she says for you to be sure to pick her after the show at the hot box and don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, yes. Yes, dear. That's husband talk if I've ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you have the type of doll that is most difficult to unload. I don't want to unload, Adelaide. I love Adelaide, and a guy without a doll, well, a doll's a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the wrap on dolls. I just say, figuring, wait for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got a doll? How come you're going to Havana alone without one? I like to travel light, but if I wish to take a doll to Havana, there is a large assortment available. <laughs> here. Indeed we do. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. I've been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come in here. 
Here are two of our pamphlets that will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're holding a midnight prayer meeting on Thursday, which I'm sure you wish to attend. I'm sure, Miss Sarah. How do you know my name? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Sky Masterson. I hope you do not think I'm getting out of line, but I think it is wonderful seeing a pretty doll, a nice-looking lady like yourself, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Here's another pamphlet that I think you should read. Thank you. Of course, I will need a lot of personal help from you. I'll be speaking at the Thursday night prayer meeting. Uh, wait, I need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others will follow. Why don't you let me help you? I bet I could fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When's this big meeting of yours, Thursday? I, I will guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. And I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? It'll take us some time to get there. To get where? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. Havana? Where else do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? The plane gets us there in five hours and back, and the food is great. Please go away. Somewhere in the world, there must be a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry. Take a crack at the other hand.
Captain Dia. Hello, Pie Face. What you got there? A book. A book? You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. Nathan, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me when I went to him about my cold. How is your cold? It's the same. So the doctor asked how long I had it, and I told him a long time. So he said to read this, because it might have to do with some psychology or something. You ain't got that, do you? Nathan, this is the psychology that tells you why girls do certain kinds of things. Well, what do you think I got in this box? Sally's wedding shop. Can you guess? It's a wedding veil. I've had it for three years. I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. Would you like to see it? It's bad luck. So you see. Nathan, I got the veil. Now all I need is a license and a blood test. Our what? Blood test. It's a law. What a crazy city. First they shut down my crap game, now they open up my veins? Nathan, you're not planning on running that crap game again. Adelaide, I quit the crap game because I love you and we're going to be the happiest married couple in the world. You. I'm all dated up tomorrow with so society acts, and he breaks it on account of your dopey crap game. Honest Adelaide, I pity you. Adelaide, please, look at me. I'm down on my knees. Oh, get it. It reminds me of your crap game. You're getting yourself worked up. You'll be better tomorrow. Where's that smile? There it is. See you tomorrow. Achoo! It says here... The average unmarried female, basically insecure, due to some long frustration may react with psychosomatic symptoms, difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a poison can develop a cold. It says here, the female remaining single, just in the legal sense, shows a neurotic tendency. See note, see note, a note. She's always taking his mind off honest work. Too bad, she's a smart businessman like Nathan has to go fall in love with his own fiance. <laughs> Benny, that is his weakness. And we should be tolerant, because I am told that it is a worldwide weakness. When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some time.
we finally lost him. I do think you should have paid some attention to him. Yes, he did attend every one of our street meetings we had this morning. He must be interested in our work. Very. On the way, Miss Sarah, you slept very beautifully this morning. No, I can't reach these people. I should have never volunteered for this post. Oh, well, let's go into lunch. General Cartwright. Hello, Sarah. Harveed. Good morning, General. Sarah, there's something I want to talk to you about. Why don't you come inside, General? Have some lunch with us? No, I'm afraid I'm too busy, my dear. I have several other calls to make at headquarters. Sarah, we at headquarters have decided to close this branch of the mission. Close the mission? General, please, someone can do good here even if I can't. We've announced a big meeting for tonight. But will anyone be there? Pardon me. Good over here. General, my name is Sky Masterson, former sitter. How do you do, Sky? How do you do? I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah could be a big success here. I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. A dollar will get you ten. What? General, might I make a suggestion? Why don't you come down to the meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance... General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Well, hallelujah! 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 <laughs> It's like a password. Okay, but where's the game? I'll tell you in a minute. Nathan, where's the game? Can I tell him it's at the Billmore garage? The money from Sky ain't come yet. You're gonna have to sell them. But it's 11 cloak. They won't stick around much longer. So sue me. Detroit, if you have no place for your game tonight, just tell us. We will seek elsewhere for entertainment. Now don't get yourself worked up, Perry. I'd like you to meet Big Jewel from Chicago. Well, how do you do, Big Jewel? I came in a shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. If there's no crap game tonight, I can tell you that Big Jewel will be considerably displeased. And Big Jewel does not like to be displeased. Well, Big Jewel, let me tell you, when, when Nathan Detroit, when Nathan Detroit, when Nathan Detroit says something, you can count on that. Well, well, well. An interesting gathering indeed. Cream of Society, Angie the Ox, Society Max, Harry the Horse, Liverlips Louie. What's the occasion, gentlemen? <laughs> it's a party! Indeed. What kind of a party? Goodbye, girls. See you tomorrow. It's a bachelor dinner, actually. Nathan is getting married. What? That's right, Lieutenant. It's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. Well, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody cannot deny. Nathan, I'm so thrilled. Why didn't you tell me? It, it's a surprise. But when I saw you standing here with all these fine gentlemen, I never dreamed it was a bachelor dinner. I thought it was a... Oh, it's a bachelor dinner. It's a bachelor dinner, all right. Just think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to become a Mrs. Nathan Troy. Time certainly does fly. Tell me, Nathan, when is the happy day? Yes, Nathan, when will it be? Well, Nathan, these kind gentlemen are kind enough to give you a bachelor dinner. That you should at least tell them the wedding date. We're gonna need time for a license. You could elope. A what? You could drive down to Maryland. They'll marry you right away. They don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that healthy? Oh, Nathan, let's do it. Oh, uh, what the heck? My congratulations to Nathan. I only hope there's nothing in heredity. Nathan, I got so many things to do before I elope tomorrow night. You'll be at the hot box. I'll be there at seven o'clock with a table reserved, dressed in whatever you want to look in. Oh, Nathan, I'm so happy. 
Nathan, you are indeed a lucky fellow. A most beautiful doll indeed. Don't you agree, Big Jewel? Bless you, crap. <laughs> Nathan, you better find a place. How can I? The mother of Sky ain't come yet. Maybe it won't come. Maybe he did take the doll to Havana. He could have. How could he? She couldn't have gone. <laughs> the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. Look, a doll like you shouldn't be mixed up with a guy like me. It's no good. I'm no good. You know why I took you to Havana? I made a bet. That's how you met me in the first place. I made a bet. How else would I go look at to meet a gambler? I gotta think of what's best for you. Oh, you talk just like a missionary. <laughs>
Thank you for taking me back. I must have behaved very badly. No, you were fine. Oh, I don't know how I'll get home with all this stuff. Sky, hello. How are you, Miss Adelaide? Fine. Look, the girl just gave me a kitchen shower. That's wonderful, Adelaide. You know Miss Sarah. How do you do? Glad to meet you. You know, Sky, we're eloping tomorrow night. Right after the hot box. Nathan and I. Good luck. Thank you. Gee, I feel like a housewife already. Miss Adelaide certainly seems happy. She's in love. Yeah, I guess so. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. You're finding out something I've known for quite a while. Obadiah. Obadiah? What's that? Obadiah Masterson. It's my real name. You're the first person I've ever told it to. Cuba. You're even more tired than I am. <laughs> what the heck is this? What's going on inside the mission? Nathan, what is this? Canasco! Wait a minute! I'm losing 10 G's! wrong. No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? Will I see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome with the mission. It's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What kind of doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll. <laughs> Have you seen Miss Adelaide? What? I bring a message for her from Nathan. What's the message? It's this way. Nathan's aunt in Pittsburgh was suddenly taken ill with a rare tropical disease. See, that's not bad. Nicely, where's Nathan? The crap game is still going on. Since last night? Big Jewel, being a large loser, does not wish the game to terminate. Where's the game? Are you looking for some action? No. I'm leaving town tonight, but I would like to talk to some of the guys. I gave my marker to, well, somebody, and I'd kind of like to clear it up before... I'll meet you outside. What about Nathan's message? Oh, right. Miss Adelaide, Nathan is in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. <laughs> Sky, I don't understand. Nathan has to come here tonight. Well, opening to get married. 
Is it that crap game again? You know Nathan. Why does it surprise you? But he promised he'd change. Change, change, change. Why is it the minute you dolls get a guy you like, you take him right in for alterations? What about you men? Why can't y'all marry people like other people do? And live normal, like people, and have a home with wallpaper and bookends? Guys like Nathan Detroit and, yeah, Sky Masterson, we don't belong in a life like that. So when dolls get mixed up with guys like us, it's no good. See you in a couple months. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Tell him I never want to talk to him ever again. And have him call me here. Why not just get another guy? Wait till you fall for somebody. You'll find out. In other words, just from sin alone, at a table reserved for two, a poison can develop the flu. You can bundle her up in the woolies, and I mean the warmest brands. You can wrap her in sweaters and coats to it's more than her frame can stand. If she still gets a feeling she's naked from looking at get away from this whole place to go somewhere where where well the sinners are respectable and well behaved you saw what happened last night they gambled in our mission and someday they'll be praying there even a guy like sky masterson he came seeking refuge he came seeking me did you know that i knew that the minute he started picking on you but i didn't know you would get stuck on him the man i love will not be a gambler but if you love him enough sarah dear Good evening, Miss Sarah, Sister Abernathy. How goes it with the soul saving? Tonight's the big meeting, isn't it? It's supposed to be. The general's coming. The general's a tough guy, huh? Come, Grandmother, we've got to hurry. Uh, Miss Sarah, you've forgotten something, but being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You hold my marker for 12 sinners tonight. Mr. Masterson, last night our mission was filled with your friends. Let us say we are even. If you don't pay off on that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty welcher. Nicely, where's the crap game? Well, Sky, it's about a ten minutes walk from here. Which way? This way. <laughs> We've had enough. We're going home. You see, Big Jewel, the boys are slightly fatigued after shooting crap for namely 24 hours. And I don't care who's tired. I'm down 25 Gs, so nobody leaves. Fellas, so, I'm starting to see Big Jewel's logic. It's not that Big Jewel is a sore loser. It's that Big Jewel just prefers to win. Ain't that right, Big Jewel? I will now play on credit. In Detroit, I'll roll you. William Nilly. If I lose, I'll give you my end of the marker. And if I lose, you'll give him the cash. I want to hear from Big Jewel. You'll give me cash. Put up your dough. I just remembered I'm robbing tonight. Get up to 2000 Now, wouldn't it be easier if I just put that right into your pocket? Get it up. Ha, 11. I win. <sighs> that cleans me. I will now play with you guys. Good evening, 
and gentlemen. Ah, fresh blood, you fellas looking for fun action? Not at the moment. I would like to talk to some of you guys. We ain't talking, we're shooting crap. I'm only asking for one minute. It has to do with my Sarah Brown's mission. Say, who is this guy? It's the fellow I was telling you about who took the mission to all of Havana. Look, fella, you stomp the action around here. If you want action, would you care to make a small wager on a proposition? What proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? How would I know a thing like that? I'll give you a clue. Oh, my God. Look, you guys, tonight is Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 the West 49th Street. They're holding a midnight prayer meeting, and I promised I would deliver them some sinners. And when it comes to sinning, most of you guys are high up among the paint cards. I don't want to spend no evening in a hallelujah joint. I guarantee you the air in the mission smells cleaner than down here. And maybe it wouldn't hurt you guys to learn something than rolling a four the hard way. Well, I tried. See you around, Nathan. Well, hold on, Sky. About the Havana business, I temporarily look right. I do not have the house to pay you. You don't have to pay me. You won. I won? But I thought you took Miss Sarah to Havana. You thought wrong. Get up, Big Joy. Now have the Don Arroyo. And this time, my dice. With your dice, he can't make a pass to save his soul. What did you say? I says, with them dice, he can't make a pass to save his soul. Well, maybe I can make a pass to save his, and yours, and yours, and his. I will bet each of you $1,000 against your soul, 1000 cash against the marker for your soul. If I win, you all have to show up at the meeting tonight, okay? One meeting? Okay, by me. I guess by me, too. You too, Nathan? $1,000 against your soul? Me? I don't even know if I have a soul. You've got one someplace. Now give me the dice and give me some room. I got a little more than dough riding on this one.
what a coincidence. I assume nicely nice we told you about tonight. Hope you ain't sore about it. Oh, please, let us not have overseen. After all, we are civilized people. We do not have to conduct ourselves like a slob. Adelaide, how can you carry on like this over one lousy moment? It's no use. I've succeeded in you not being able to upset me no more. I've got you completely out of my... Oh, Nathan. Adelaide, baby, never do that to me again. We'll get married. We'll have a little white house with a green fence, just like the Whitney Colors. Look, Nathan, we can make everything right. It's not even midnight yet. Five minutes to 12. Let's elope right now. Okay, Adelaide. I, I can't. Why not? Come on, Nathan. We'll be late. Come on. Nathan, why can't we elope right now? I've got a prayer meeting. Nathan, this is the biggest lie you've ever told me. But I promise you it's true, Adelaide. It's several minutes past midnight. Is anyone coming? Sergeant Sarah, something is terribly wrong. I know what's wrong, General. I'm wrong. I've spoken to these people day after day, but my words haven't reached them. I think you had better... Everybody here? Where's Nathan Detroit? Present! Miss Sarah, here you are. One dozen or more assorted sinners. Sorry we didn't have enough time to clean them up. Welcome, brothers. Welcome. Won't you have a seat? Sit down, all of you. And this is a mission, not Roseland, so I suggest you not indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I'm required to depart for Points West tonight, I'm appointing Nathan Detroit Major Dumbo in my spot. Nathan, anyone who does not conduct himself according to Hoyle can answer to Sky Matchson personally. What a remarkable young man. Now remember that, fellas. Sister Abernathy, your dice. We are honored to have you here tonight. The, condu the conductor of this meeting will be General Cartwright. Welcome, brothers, welcome. It is wonderful to see our mission graced by so many evil-looking sinners. Now, shall we start by giving testimony? Anyone? Any, give testimony. I ain't no stool pigeon. Come, brothers, I know it's difficult, but let one of you give testimony to his heart. Anyone? Harry! Oh, no. Harry the horse! <sighs> ah, well, you see, when Sky was rolling us for our souls... I beg your pardon? Sky Masterson, you rolled us a thousand dollars against our souls. That's why we're here. I, I don't think I understand. I do, uh, General. Uh, he means that they're only here because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game. Well, would you look at that? This whole meeting came out a result of gambling. Shows how good can come out of evil. Sergeant Sarah, you have done remarkable work. Thank you. <laughs> now, anyone go give testimony? Aha! Well, now we have testimony from Brother Nicey Nicey Johnson. Well, it happens to be kind of funny, like a dream. That's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. <clears throat> I dreamed last night I got on a boat to heaven and by some chance I had brought my dice along and there I stood and I heard someone fade me but the passengers, they know. Thanks. 